Well, good morning and welcome aboard the Oregon, California and Eastern Railway. I hope you're enjoying your trip and we sure enjoyed uh, the opportunity to have you on board with us today. We're going to look uh, at the making of water, both rivers and lakes, and try to take some of the mystery out of that process. Now, making water is a scary thing, probably the scariest of all the scenery elements. So we're going to try and, uh, for lack of a better term, dumb this thing down so that you'll feel comfortable in tackling something like this. What we're trying to do is to have you turn your plywood Pacific into a really realistic uh, model railroad that would include water. I think it's a lot of fun. I think you, once you stick your toe in the water, you're going to have a, a good time and it's going to be very interesting and you'll be surprised and amazed the realism that good quality water adds to a railroad. So let's run outside, get back to our module and find out just exactly uh, how we solve this uh, major little dilemma of making water. It's a lot of fun. All right, let's talk a little bit about the uh, coloring of a river, for example. As we mentioned earlier, I think you need to do a little research first on what your rivers look like, both in early morning, midday, and evening. And you'll be amazed at the difference of the colors that, uh, that they appear. All right, now we're gonna move from the blue to the kind of the blue-black. Now the blue-black will dominate again, and that's not a bad thing. You don't, you don't wind up looking like stripes. If you're still not too happy, one thing that you can do is just to take a finger and go back through and tap some areas to kind of spread them out a little bit. Soften some of it a bit, up a little bit here and there. And there you have it, half a river. We'll do the other half and then we'll start talking about pours. All right, now you can see we've made a few improvements. This is getting the ground ready for the first pour. Now we're gonna have three pours and we'll show you the first one initially and how we mix the colors for it. So here we go. We're gonna pour the hardener in and we're gonna go up to our 7th, 8th inch line. It should be about like that. And I'm going to double check it to make sure that we're an inch and three quarters. Okay, there we are, inch and three quarters. And we're going to mix it. Now, you notice the color in it. Um, I tried to get a brown, uh, kind of an opaque color for the first color. The first pour should have anywhere from 70 to 80 percent of the color of the entire uh, display when you're done. Then the, I'm going to pour in the middle of the river area. One thing I should note is that you need to seal this really, really well because if you don't, uh, and you're in the basement, your layout's in the basement, you're going to get a lot of river on the floor. And uh, that's not a good thing. Now you see we're covering in the middle. There's a lot of bubbles in there. We'll take care of that in a little bit. Now all we have to do is wait. Have a few more bubbles will come up to the surface. We'll get rid of them. I want to talk a little bit about the relationship between the river and the railroad because I think that's very important when you do your modeling. I see a lot of folks make the mistake of putting the river right beside the tracks and no matter which way the track turns, either to the left or to the right, that uh, uh, the river follows dutifully along right with it. And that's not the way it works. As you can see outside, the river sometimes goes away from the track and then comes back into the track. 
And that's the way it does. Uh, water seeks its own course as it moves downhill, but railroads, on the other hand, have to look at tangents, have to look at degree of curvature, and there'll be times when the railroad will go right through the middle of the cut, and the river is going to have to go around the point and come back in and join the railroad. So keep that in mind when you design your railroad. And it So here we go. We'll uh, just repeat the process again. Mix them up. And again, we'll mix for a total of five minutes. All right. I think we've uh, just about taken care of our five-minute responsibilities here. Final pour. This is just a mass of bubbles, but as you know, we can take care of that. it and see. So what we'll be doing after we remove the bubbles from it is to check it after about three hours then uh, every 30 minutes after that uh, and I'll show you how to do that when we get to that point here in a little bit and uh, just to see at what point where it's really starting to set up because what we're trying to do now is the tough part and that's to eliminate that glassy sheen that you see in a lot of lakes on model railroads. That's not to say there isn't a pristine lake out there. You've seen the photographers where they've taken pictures and you see the reflection of what's above them in the water and it's a perfect mirror image. That's very, very rare out there in nature. Usually you see the ripples of waves and stuff as you see the reflection. That's what we're trying to accomplish here and we'll show you how to do that next. So we'll take care of the bubbles, then we'll uh, uh, cut through three hours and start uh, seeing if we can make some waves yet and uh, take it from there. Here we are four hours and 30 minutes into the process and if we're not there we're really close to being there so let's see if we can make some waves. It's uh, not uh, rocket science. If you want no problem. But through here, you have more like riffles because the water should be shallower here because the main force is hitting this rock outcropping and it's changed the channel of the flow. So through here, we're going to put in a few little ripples. See how that goes? Boy, that was tough, wasn't it? We're going to widen it out just a little bit here. Now, you can always hear the water flowing over those ripples, right? Very shallow water in that area. And it's kind of going around the corner a little bit. Then normally, you'd get a few more someplace down in this area here so we'll uh, we'll we'll just start one little one right in oh say about right in here don't overdo it just a little bit we deal in illusions Okay, can you feel the water flowing? Okay, I think we got it.